Absolutely massive news coming out of Manchester City that Rodri is out for the season. Because I don't think they've got anyone. Well, no, they, no, I don't think they haven't got anyone else in the in the team. Man City, with yeah. all the quality players they've got, they haven't got anyone who could do that job like so, him. So On September twenty second, twenty twenty four, every Man City fan's worst nightmare was trending on Twitter. Rodri's so dirty, he somehow managed to do a nasty tackle on himself. Can't see City winning the league now. Without him out for the rest of the season, we've seen the drop off without him. The role Rodri plays has been deemed irreplaceable. But what does this actually mean for Man City, and how will this affect them? Well, I'll explain it all in this video. The 28 year old midfielder is one of the favorites to win the Ballon d'Or next month, given he's one of the world's best players and for sure the most influential at Man City. The ramifications of this injury could be actually much bigger than we think. Leading up to the match against Arsenal, Rodri made some pretty ironic comments. For some context, with the addition of the new Club World Cup format and Champions League format, teams have the chance to be playing about 20 or 30 more games this season compared to the last. And that's before adding in any national team appearances. There has been a lot of talk about how congested the player schedule has already been, but this season is a new level. Then Rodri comes out and says this. Between 40 and 50 is, is the amount of games in which a player can perform in the highest level. After that, everything comes, you drop. They'll actually end up like going on strike or not refusing to play in such, you know, such a big kind of calendar. Yeah, I think we're close to that. From the standpoint of the players, 70 to 80 matches in a calendar year sounds insane. And the point of view they are coming from makes sense. But a lot of fans do not see it that way. Right, mate, what do you think of Rodri saying that footballers might have to go on strike due to fixture congestion? Well, try be a plumber, mate, doing 80 hours a week, mate, yeah? I'd love to do a job. I'd love to play football for a living, mate, yeah. Eh? It's better than training as well. Yeah, I think so. I think they earn enough money to, uh, to play football more than once a week. So you could have only expected as much when the news was confirmed that he got injured. The trolling began almost instantly. He won't need to go on strike now. Plenty of time to rest. Tears of joy. Hopefully a long recovery. I know Roger was banging on about going on strike, but I didn't think he'd actually do it. I think you get the point. You must be wondering what Pep Guardiola had to say on this matter as well. We'll be out for a long time, a while. It almost felt like karma for Rodri, especially if you consider that he almost took both of Martin Odegaard's legs off with this tackle in a Nations League a while back. So with him getting injured against Arsenal, the irony is almost too much. And real quick, before I continue on in the video, I please ask that you hit the subscribe button, it would really help me out. Thank you. The big question on everyone's mind right now is how this injury will affect the title hopes of Manchester City. The Premier League champions have not lost a single match within their last 48 games in which Raja was included in the starting 11. The numbers don't lie, the team is almost practically built around him and as a player he is irreplaceable. Honestly, Rodri is such an artist, everything he does is a work of art. Ever since Rodri joined Man City in the 2019-20 season, this graph by BBC shows they have only lost 11% of the matches and their points per game with him is 2.36. And to know what Man City will be missing without him, what makes him so effective in the first place? Put simply, he wins the ball back from the opposition and then gives it to another player on his team. And he does so with almost a robotic level of accuracy. Since his debut in a 5-0 win at West Ham, only Arsenal midfielder Declan Rice has won possession more often. Nobody has won the ball back more often in the middle third of the pitch than Rodri has. And only 7 players during that time have made more tackles than him. His reading of the game and competitive nature has also added a real defensive steal to City with the club keeping 73 clean sheets in 260 appearances. What really sets him apart, however, is how he plays on the other side of the ball. In other words, how intelligent he is in the attack for a holding midfielder. Since arriving in the Premier League, Rodri has successfully completed nearly 2,000 more passes than any other player. The City midfielder has made 13,699 in total, with Brighton defender Lewis Dunk next on the list with 11,952. While his passing accuracy of 91.9% proves he rarely gives the ball away, even though he's often moving it deep himself into the final third. This level of astute ball playing ability and overall class as a player is not common in football, period. And Pep Guardiola explains his role at City perfectly. If a holding midfielder have the recognition external like Erling Haaland or Kevin would be have a problem. Holding midfielder has to never ever be in the highlights do the job I had to do, but without him, we could not do what we are doing. At the end of the day, City could still win the title. Without the same ball winning abilities and possession retainment, in the squad it could get quite messy. Obviously they're not going to play with 10 men, so who is actually most likely to replace him on the pitch? For a long time Pep had made it known that Rodri was irreplaceable, but it seems that he was never really prepared for the day that Rodri had to be replaced, because he'd always been there. 
His injury record is almost completely clean up until now. It's very difficult to find a plan B, isn't it, with Rodri out? Yeah, because they just don't have anybody of a similar vein to replace him and, and need him. Calvin Phillips is the nearest thing to a sitting midfielder in the City squad, but Guardiola has long since decided the former Leeds man is not good enough and he is currently on loan at Ipswich. And he can't come back till January, so he's not really an option right now. That means Guardiola is likely to tinker with his formation and play with two holding midfielders. And for that role, we could see either Kovacic fill that role, or it seems like a better option is John Stones. Why go on, generals? Yeah, in general. He has rarely played as a lone defensive midfielder during his time at Etihad, but has been inverted into the deep lying role at some times from central defense and right back, which is basically the same thing. At the time of this recording, Guardiola hasn't come out and said who is actually more likely to fill the role, but it is possible we may see the chance of Rico Lewis or Ilkay Gundogan find their way into the starting 11. The January transfer window opens up in a few months, so who knows what's going to happen. When it comes to what his injury will actually mean for the future of his career, it could be pretty bad. There has been many world class players that have torn their ACL and never come back the same, and the same can be said for the contrary. He is currently 28 years old, so I don't think that Arsenal fans can completely write him off so soon. The impact of Rodri and the City team cannot be overstated, so when it comes to the broader picture as in the Premier League as a whole, this for sure opens up the title race to likes of Arsenal and Liverpool. Arsenal's squad continues to hold strong and Liverpool are starting to look better and better with each match, so this year I think we'll get to see a three-way title race, for the first time in what feels like years. At the end of the day, we are not really going to know what happens with Rodri and it's possible he might make a return sooner than we know it. Albeit, maybe not for Man City, because of their 115 charges for breaking the financial fair play rules. But that's a whole video in itself. But hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.